That's the craziest flounder I've ever hooked before. What's happening y'all? Welcome back to James V Outdoors. Today I'm getting ready to do some flounder fishing. I am currently sitting in the car waiting for this rain to stop. That 0% chance of rain in the forecast was not uh, entirely accurate. But as soon as this rain stops, I'm gonna put the boat over and do some flounder fishing. Uh, the last couple weeks I've been flounder fishing a lot. The bite's been pretty good. And as I've been posting these pictures, I've had some people ask me to do a how-to video on flounder. So I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna talk about two methods that I use to catch flounder. The first being uh, artificial and what we're gonna do today. And then the second half of the video is gonna be talking about live baiting. So before I get started fishing, I'm just gonna talk about what I'm using really quickly. It's actually so simple that you're gonna be like, wow, that's it, but I'm telling you, it works. So all that I'm working with today is a quarter ounce spec rig by Betts. It is very easy to use. You just tie it right onto your braid and go. It's like a tandem bucktail rig. And then also these three inch swimming gulp. You can get four inch and you can get different colors, but I've just had a lot of luck with the white three inch swimming mullet. Well, after that slight rain delay, we have finally made it into the water here. I'm gonna get baited up with some gulp and start doing a little bit of jigging here and see if we can go ahead and get a flounder. So really all that I'm doing right now, we got an incoming tide. I'm casting up against the tide because these spec rigs are not super heavy. You basically wanna have some slack in your line to allow them to get up above the tide and then sink to the bottom. And by the time they get back to you, you're basically vertical jigging these at this point. If you watch my rod, I'm just doing like a twitch, 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 pause, wait a few seconds, twitch again. Basically, you just wanna keep those tails moving and then pause them for a second, tails moving. Just trying to attract the attention of a flounder that's like laying there. Something else that's nice about this spot right here that I'm fishing, it's something you wanna look for with flounder. Basically, a flounder's gonna lay on the bottom and he's gonna wait for something to come by and ambush it. So for, for me in this spot right here, I'm fishing right behind a bridge. So a bridge offers a lot of uh, you know ambush structure for a flounder. But also too, there's a thump right there, one, one thump. But also too with that, is that there's a drop off here you know it's like 14 foot of water 18 foot of water and within that drop off you're gonna have like several different ledges and those ledges are a good spot for a flounder to lay so kind of think about where a flounder could ambush something you know and watch your fish finder and get your depths sometimes you'll feel something and uh, it's actually just like an oyster shell or structure down there but it makes you think for a second that you've got something because these flounder, if they're in a, like an aggressive feeding mood, they will actually just grab onto that bait and you won't even feel a thumb, you know. Uh, there's a kind of variation that you'll, sometimes you put just a tap, sometimes it's a thump, thump, and then sometimes it's just like they pick it up and they've got it in their mouths and you just have to set the hook. So sometimes you hook into an oyster shell and then you, you know, find yourself setting the hook on nothing, but you got to do it because otherwise you may miss a couple flounder bites. Some sort of fish here and i think probably a small flounder let's see drags that a little loose he's getting bigger as he comes up here to be honest with you let's see oh that's a nice flounder i'm saying small flounder here comes a decent flounder actually come on baby. there you go right in the net He'd be real close. I think he's probably going to be legal though. Let's see. But what do you know? He fooled me a little bit. He's right at 17 inches. Matter of fact, he first came up and I thought that he was going to be a little bit smaller. And I said, well, my drag is too loose. But then all of a sudden I uh, felt a little bit of a run right there at the end. And a uh, pretty nice fish, 17 inches. First one for the box. That's a pretty decent start. You pull up here and within your first five minutes, you've got one keeper flounder. Pretty good, especially after all the rain, the water's murked up. But I guess it doesn't matter when they're biting. I think that was a fish and I pulled it out of his mouth. That's another thing about these flounder too. You gotta think about when you bring a bait by his face and you're moving, that flounder's gotta take a second to eat it and he works his way up your bait. So you don't want to just feel a bite immediately, just you know, start snatching on it here. Let's see what this is. This is, this time I'm gonna say little flounder. Just a little one about 12 inches long. Maybe in a couple years I'll find him again. Croaker's biting your tail. I'm telling you, it's good practice to bring some extra gold with you because <laughs> with the crabs and the croaker and the round head, you will lose some tails out here. For me, the gulp is just always out fishing the other stuff I've tried. You know, you can do uh, like Seaman and, and that stuff and put some Procure on there, but I just had the luck with the gulp and so I really stuck with it. 
get up here on my little fishing perch right here on the back of this seat. There you go. Feels like a decent flounder right there. That was just a thump, thump. And I lift up and felt some extra weight, so I went ahead and set the hook. I got a feeling he's going to be close to keeper size, but I can't. He might be a little short. Go ahead and hit him just in case. Oh no, he's a keeper. There you go. Second keeper flounder of the day right there. He's going to be about the same size as the first 17 inches. I also have the world's largest landing net right here. I don't know why. I guess my other one broke that I always use for flounder and uh, you got to use what you got. He's practically a clone of that other fish, 17 inches. It's like cookie cutter size, but let me tell you something. I don't care what size flounder it is, if he's a keeper, he's good eating. Just like that, I'm halfway to a limit. So, I mean, it's been pretty quick. It's only been about 30 minutes. These gulp bouncing up and down on the bottom, they're all about it. There you go. I think it's another short again, but it's just one after another right here on these gulp. Yep. Here we go, hooked up again. I believe this could be the third keeper of the day. He's gonna be right on the edge. Maybe just a bit short. He fooled me though that time. Yeah, he fooled me a bit. I thought he was a little bit bigger and he came up there and when I saw him, I was like, nah, not quite. He was about half an inch short. So it was his lucky day. He made it back to the water. He just made it right at 16 and a half exactly. So that's number three in the cooler for me. Another little tip that I'll give you here when you're fishing these gulps is over time that scent kind of wears off in the salt water. I like to take and keep a tub of this gulp juice around and dip my baits back in there and just kind of reflavor them before I cast them out again. Now that the wind's calmed down a bit, I can probably talk about what I'm actually fishing with here. This is a, just a 2500 series reel and I've got it spooled up with 15 pound braid and then I'm coming down to the spec rig obviously, you know, I'm tying a Albright knot between the braid and to the spec rig and then this rod is just a St. Croix rod here It's a seven foot medium heavy. I was fishing just a seven foot medium But I may or may not have snapped the rod itself on a 70 pound ray about two weeks ago James called a fish so big it broke his rod St. Croix rod So uh, the new <laughs> new rods in the mail on the way here, but just fishing with this one for right this minute but either way these rods have a very sensitive tip which is nice because you want to be able to obviously move the bait properly but you want to feel a thump from that flounder so you want something sensitive here but something obviously still sturdy enough that you can bring up a flounder off the bottom yep thump 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 you can see the rod tip that time there he goes little guy no no he's too small <laughs> getting heckled by the local fisherman out here I say that as if I'm not a local but still <laughs> I knew there was a flounder in there but I was thinking it was gonna be the last one for the limit We'll get him right here. There we go. Feels like it could be a decent fish. Oh yeah. Put on a little drag actually. Just get the net ready just in case. This would make number four and my limit if we get him in here. And of course he's 16 and a half. Oh, he came off right there. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Dang it. 
I hope I get another opportunity. It kind of hurts when you're working on your limit right there and then get a fish that you think is going to do it and just lose them beside the boat. Yep. There you go. Decent fish too. That's the very next cast. Ah, uh, I don't know if he's as big as the last one. He might be. He might be. Yeah, it's a good chance this is number four right here. Yeah, he's a good fish. All right, buddy. Hang on there. Let's go around. Oh, look at that. He, he, he saw that net and he ghosted me. He's like, no, thank you. That's the craziest flounder I've ever hooked before. I don't know that I've ever had him do that. That's two runs right past the net. Oh, got him. Got him there. That's it. It's going to be number four, the limit right there. All an artificial bait. It's a nice fish too. He's real thick. There you go. 17 and a half. Beautiful, beautiful fish. It's a one man limit right there, all entirely on artificials, all on gulp. Now enjoy this awkward video of me struggling to get the perfect thumbnail picture. Thanks for watching James V Outdoors. I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you learned something useful. If there's anything that I missed, feel free to put it in the comments below. Maybe we can help some other people catch some flounder as well. Stick around because there are plenty more videos coming. And also, if you have something you want to see me do, just comment below because I will go and do it. I will fish for anything. See you guys next time.